And so a quick overview of, uh, of what, what we're doing here is, is uh, we're, uh, it, we're, I'm, I'm trying to demonstrate a workflow in the discovery environment here and the, and the scientific use cases and RNA-seq uh, analysis. We have 300 odd um, applications integrated into the discovery environment now. So there are quite a few different workflows you can do and this is one of the examples. The, the question here is can we compare gene expression levels using RNA-seq data in Arabidopsis wild type and high five genetic backgrounds? Um, so the high five or long hypocotyl five is a leucine zipper transcription factor. Um, mutations cause aberrant phenotypes in morphology, pigmentation, hormonal response, and so on. And we're going to use RNA-seq to compare uh, the genetic backgrounds to look for genes that are uh, putatively regulated by HI5, this being a, uh, this being a uh, transcription factor. We expect there to be some kind of regulatory cascade or a lot of genes that are affected downstream when we knock out the HI5 transcription factor. Uh, so I got the um, original experimental from uh, the NCBI sequencing read archive. Um, and uh, there are two replicates each for uh, wild type and uh, high five mutant seedlings. Uh, quick overview of the RNA-seq. Um, uh, we start off in the cell and uh, uh, it, it, it makes um, messenger RNAs which are spliced to form mature messenger RNAs and then we move into the wet lab and fragment the uh, fragment the, the messenger RNAs to do a random hexmer prime cDNA synthesis, and then we move into the in silico or dry lab and match uh, sorry align these short reads uh, to the reference genome and make inferences about transcri transcript structure uh, based on where the reads map and uh, mapping across splice junctions and so on, and also inferences about transcript abundance based on the number of reads that map to. Uh, the particular uh, transcripts. So these alignments are saved as BAM files, uh, which is a binary version of SAM. Um, uh, I usually like to just get a feel for the audience by asking how many people are familiar with SAM BAM format. Okay, so a good uh, a good uh, half of you. Um, this is sort of the de facto standard for short read alignments these days, and there's a SAM tools kit that's good for manipulating these things. Um, and uh, these particularly these particularly sorry, excuse me, these particular libraries are uh, around 10 to uh, 10 to 13 million reads uh, for each sequencing run. Uh, as as the as the volume and uh, goes up and the costs go down, these have become fairly modestly sized um, uh, uh, RNA seq libraries. Uh, they're they're a couple of years old now, and there's about a half a about a half a megabase of, of aligned uh, sequence uh, for each of these individual replicate analyses. Uh, for the purposes of this exercise, I randomly subsampled about, mm, about one eighth of each of these libraries for the FASTQ files that we're actually working with just so that we can run it in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, so this, uh, for the non-initiated non among you, um, is what a FASTQ file looks like. FASTQ is the de facto standard, uh, interoperability standard for representing uh, short re uh, next generation sequencing data. How many of you are familiar with this format? Okay, so about half of you again. Uh, basically, it's, it's derived uh, from, uh, although it's not immediately obvious, it's derived from the FASTA format and it has both the sequence and the quality data. Uh, quality scaling um, is kind of a an arcane um, uh, field where there are a number of different versions and history and, and lots of fun for bio, bioinformaticians like myself. Okay, so uh, a situation um, that we often encounter in our travels is that people say, I've got X number of RNA-seq libraries uh, that I'm sitting on and I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to analyze them. And uh, there's varying degrees of sophistication of the, of the investigators. Um, uh, it, it, in terms of um, this kind of bioinformatics specifically. Um, they may or may not have access to a clever graduate student or postdoc in their lab or down the hall or a bioinformatics core facility if they're lucky. Uh, but a lot of times what's going on here is kind of a black box and then, and then you, you get an analysis and then you get some outputs, some graphs, uh, some quality control data on your library um, and, and various other things. Uh, maybe some, maybe some, some tab delimited files you can export back into your spreadsheet thing and look for things that are twofold, reg, up or down regulated or significant or what have you. Um, and so this is, this is something that we've been working um, 
uh, first of all, to, to, uh, to make accessible, um, and second of all, to, to, tr to try to demystify, at least to some, some degree. But the main, the main thing we're trying to do is just make it possible. And so this is, a, this is a method paper that came out in Nature Protocols last year from Coyle Trapnell and colleagues um, that outlines the components of the so-called uh, tuxedo workflow and in the grand tradition of, of uh, naming bioinformatics applications. Um, it's called the tuxedo workflow because the components are um, top hat, which is the um, high level iterative aligner for short reads that uses bow tie um, as its uh, short read alignment engine. Bow, t bow tie is a high efficiency short read aligner that's not very, that, that in the earlier versions isn't very smart and can't map across splice junctions, but top hat can do that by, by splitting the reads and, and, and mapping smaller pieces of them and so on. And then it goes to, tough li to cuff links which actually assembles the transcripts and quantifies the transcripts. And then cuff merge, which I'll talk about a little bit later, which uh, sort of amalgamates all of your different um, uh, replicate transcriptomes into one master reference transcriptome. And then uh, cuff diff, which does differential expression, uh, where you're comparing across uh, uh, developmental time stages, uh, different tissues, uh, different experimental conditions, and that sort of thing. Uh, the endpoint of your analysis might actually be cufflinks if you're only characterizing a single transcriptome, but people are awfully, often wanting to do comparative analysis, and that's where we get into uh, cuff diff. And then e even further downstream uh, is Cummerbund, which is, an, which is an R library. R is a statistical programming and, and plotting language that's very useful for, for drawing graphs, doing statistics, um, and various other things. Uh, so this is, this is a series of commands which to someone who's familiar with the command line interface, says, oh wow, that's great, I only have to run these 15 things and then my analysis is done. Um, but for most people, uh, what you end up with is a bunch of tabular data that requires further interpretation, and you may not have access to a Linux server, or you may not be familiar with the command line interface, so this isn't really all that exciting, exciting to, to you if you fall into that category. Um, but this slide uh, sort of demonstrates uh, in a cartoon, cartoonish way um, how we've applied the I, I various components of the iPlant infrastructure to do this fairly complicated analytical workflow um, without making it very complicated for the user. So, of course, you have to get your data into the iPlant data store, which underpins most of our, uh, our consumer-facing applications. Um, the iPlant data store is where your data lives, and you can access it from the discovery environment, uh, from Atmosphere, uh, from the command line. Uh, from 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 uh, uh, computers in the uh, you know the exceed supercomputers if you're if you if you if you like to be a, a command line power user um, and and also through other applications that are out of the scope of this this talk so so the um, most of the work that we're doing today is in the discovery environment we've already launched our top hat and bow tie uh, alignment it takes about f between half an hour and and, and, and 45 minutes depending on the, on, the, on, on, on the queuing time and that sort of thing. And then we use cufflinks to assemble our transcripts, cuff merge to, to make our reference transcriptome that we use for the comparative analysis using cuff diff. And then, so this is all the stuff that's going on. Uh, a typical application integrated into this discovery environment um, is a, command, a typically a Linux command line um, application that runs on our um, job execution cluster um, at the University of Arizona, or also runs on, on, uh, on Exceed supercomputers via the uh, foundational API that you hear about later today. Um, and, and, and so uh, when we actually want to move into looking at visualizations and things like that, um, then we move into the cloud computing. Um, and so we have pre-configured uh, cloud computer um, instance that has R and Cumberbun and all this stuff pre-installed so that you can do some analytics and looking at pictures and things like that that way. We're not going to have time to do that today, but I did, as just a little treat, um, add, add some value-added uh, processing to the cuff diff that does a few things like sorting files into, into tab-limited tables and uh, draws a few pictures for you, just as examples, using, using a, an embedded R script.